last time we left off showing you guys our new truck camper, or new to us. It's really 35 years old, but to us, it feels new, and we are finally hitting the road for our international overlanding adventures. So starting now, we are driving from the United States all the way down to the end of Argentina to Ushuaia. This will be a multi-month open-ended journey. We aren't really sure how long we're gonna be gone, but before we cross the border from San Diego into Mexico, we're going through every single piece of gear that we have meticulously packed into this truck to make sure everything is in tip-top shape. We've planned for months and months to make this trip happen, and we're gonna show you all exactly what we packed in our truck to keep us safe, healthy, and happy on the road. I don't feel like a minimalist at all doing this video. I feel like we have so much stuff in that one tiny little area. We do, we have a lot of things and we're going to show you everything. This is our what's in our camper video. What, how are we gonna call it? What are we gonna call it? Um, we'll, figure uh, it. we'll figure that out. Yeah. We're gonna do this by section, try to make it as quick as possible. If you have a specific question about a product that we didn't mention or that we did mention, it, drop it in the comments and we'll be sure to answer those. And if there's a product that you're like, hey, you guys should probably go buy that, leave it in the comments below because we may buy it. We may. We're supposed to be minimalist, but obviously we're not always. All right, let's dive in. First section is the kitchen. I think this is one area we kind of splurged in this new camper, and we bought a couple of the little appliances and gears that we've never had before. So right here, this is our pot set. We have two pots. They are by Green Pan, so they are no stick. They're safe to eat off of, and they have a detachable handle. I love that handle. I do, do it again. too. Right here, we have our coffee setup, and this is probably one of the big space splurges that we have in our camper. We have this insulated French press by Brewtech. This was a gift from some of our good friends back home. They knew that coffee on the road was really important to us, so thank you, Lita and Ian. But we have a coffee grinder, a hand grinder, which actually works really well if you've ever used coffee grinders in the That past. is a nice hand grinder. That one does work really well. We also have two insulated cups, so this kind of all came as a set. Plus, it's called an air escape, but you store your coffee beans and grounds in this, and it keeps them fresh comes with a scoop. We have the kettle for boiling the water on the stove. Also works on the induction cooktop. Two wine tumblers and then two little pint-sized glasses. Oh, and this right here is an ice maker. I was actually influenced by Alice Overland. She had this, but it goes in a freezer. And if you've ever traveled in an RV and try to make ice in like a traditional tray, it's not easy because the water will swoosh all over the place. But this, it locks it inside and then you pop it out and the ice breaks out of it. So these are enamel plates and bowls of right beer bones. We got them at REI. Get two each. If we have friends over, it's BYOB, B. bring but, your own bowl. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was funny. On my side, let's start here. We have the induction cooktop. We do have propane inside the truck, which we use most of the time, but just in case we're feeling frisky and want to electrify our dinner, this works well. Then we have what we're both really excited about, a blender. And it comes with three different size jars. And essentially, you put everything you want in this, you blend it, and that's your cup. You drink right out of it. We have measuring cups and measuring spoons. Collapsible. We have a spoon. <laughs> we have a wine opener that's bent, not because of design, because I, I'm too strong. <laughs> and then the rest of it is just like silverware. And that's essentially what we have in our kitchen. All right, let's go on to the next section. The sun's coming out, so we had to put on our shades. Next section is bathrooms. It's a pretty quick one. So on my side, we have our Trilino toilet. This is a urine diverting toilet. So it's a composting toilet, but it doesn't have to handle it turns like a lot of them do. This one, we use coconut core for the solids to dry it out. And then it has its own liquid separating part. Super easy to use. I will admit, I was a little hesitant to get this toilet just because there's no fan on it. Yeah. It works really well. It does. We don't smell it, which I'm really surprised by. TMI on the sun. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> like there's not going to be dump stations all over the world, so we knew we needed some sort of composting toilet. This is a less invasive one. It didn't require any drilling in the truck. It didn't require any vents or holes or anything in it, so this one was really easy, and we really like it so far. I'm not going to show you inside because that would be way too much information. And you can get $35 off if you purchase through the link down below. We are affiliates with them. I really do like this thing. And then beneath the toilet here is our wooden shower mat. This is important, not just for inside the shower, because sometimes you're a little bit uneven when you're parked, and so the water doesn't fully drain while you're showering. This keeps you standing out of it, so you're not standing in a puddle of water, which would be really gross. But also, we use it in our outdoor shower. So if we are showering somewhere like here, and the ground is sandy, and we're washing off, we're not just having sand splash up back on our clean legs. So we move that inside and outside as we need to. On my side are towels. These are microfiber towels, meaning they, they dry fast and they're not gonna be wet. So they're soft. They are, and they are soft. We, we like these towels. Then 
We have our little caddy, just like a dorm room in college. Every imaginable soap, razor, whatever we have in this. That's our bathroom. Lesson in the bathroom and the kitchen, you could never have too many towels in a rig. We have microfiber towel on microfiber towel. There are always wet messes, whether it's wet dog, wet shoes, showering, beach, whatever we're doing, you can never have too many microfiber towels. All, All right. right, next one. This is the fun section. This is where overlanding finally gets to be us using toys. So let's just jump into it. The first thing we have is the Guzzle H2O Stream Overland Bundle. And what this is, is we can take water from any freshwater source, no matter how dirty it is, and pump it into our freshwater tank. I put it in like recovery and safety, because to me, water is essential for life. And <laughs> no matter where we are, if we get stuck, we will always have water, assuming there's a water source nearby. It comes with a 30 foot rope and it can pump 30 gallons of water on a charge. And then it comes with a charger and just charges via Outlet. I Super. cannot wait to use this. I know we haven't gotten to use it because we've had fresh water all around us, but I am so excited <laughs> to at least put this to the test soon. That is by Guzzle H2O. They have the same people who do our water filtration system that's on board in the rig already. So we have this recovery rope and shackles there for the winch and for recovery if we get stuck. Hopefully we will not need them, but we may need them. They still have the tags and the plastic on them. Uh, <laughs> They probably won't forever. Right here, we have a shovel. We got this little shovel. This is really like getting ourselves out of sticky situations or sand if we get stuck. You always need a shovel. Show it. Collapse it. Transformer, more than meets the eye. Right here, we have two headlamps. One is rechargeable and one is on batteries. Definitely go with the rechargeable one if you don't already have a headlamp. These, oh, I put this in safety because I think this is so important with our loud rig. So our rig is 35 years old and it is a little noisy. Because of that, we ended up splurging and we bought these super nice earplugs. They are reusable. They're not like the foamy kind that you have to throw away after a while. These are by Loop and they're not cheap. They're like $45, $50, but they're adjustable. And what I mean by that is they come with different earbud sizes. So you can get them where it's just one setting for like one level of noise or you can get them where they adjust and they're completely electric free. So you don't have to charge them or anything like that. But you twist it and you have three different levels of hearing blockage, I guess is the best way to say it. I love these. I have already used these several times. The loop earplugs were one of the best investments we've made. So definitely recommend for your sanity. We also carry two pepper sprays with us, one for each of us. This is for our own safety when running, but it's also for protecting Kramer because where we're going, there will be a lot of street dogs and not all dogs have rabies shots, so it's just like an extra little safety thing. This right here is a neon vest. So we actually have two of these. Right here, we have maps of Central America, Costa Rica, Belize, Guatemala, Panama, physical maps. Now, some of you may be wondering, why do you need physical maps? You have Starlink, you have your phone, you have Garmin, all is true. But in case some freak accident, it's always nice to have something physical. But another tip is, a lot of times, it's easier to pull out a map and show a local where to go uh, than it is to pull out a phone or you know our Garmin or something like that. Okay, first of all, we're not telling the locals where to go. They're telling us oh. where to go. <laughs> we don't know where we're going. <laughs> this is where you go. That was actually a tip from the couple we bought our truck from. Yeah. They say get paper maps because the best way to get the local's advice when you're going somewhere is to show a paper map, hold it down and then let them circle and draw like, go here. That's such great advice. I am so glad they mentioned that. Yeah. We got the Nat Geo ones because Nat Geo is highly recommended and it came as a pack. I'm excited to use these. Yeah, these are really cool. Next, we have the Garmin InReach Mini 2. We're big fans of Garmin over here, but this thing specifically helps you if you're in a real, real pinch. So this is a like SOS, basically satellite, if you're in distress, you hit this button and it will let the authorities know wherever you are in the world and help will be on the way. We carry this with us on road trips yeah. in other countries just because if we got in a wreck or something, we can hit the button if we can't reach our phone and somebody's gonna come find us. Yeah. So that's really cool. It is like a subscription of about $15 a month, but to us, that's a small price to pay for your life. Not only do you use this overlanding, you can use this in your normal life, walking around in your neighborhood if you really wanted to. And it does work together with our Garmin navigation system. Which is the next thing on the list. I absolutely love this thing. This is the Garmin Overland Tread. It is our navigation. It has iOverlander on it. It has weather on it. It can connect to our Starlink. You can download maps. So we have all sorts of neat tools with Garmin on this display. 
It's really, really cool. I do not regret getting this. It's, that was a splurge and definitely worth it. Yeah. Next is a really cool thing. It's a saw. Please this, be careful. I can see this going really wrong really fast. <laughs> this past summer, we were out camping with friends and a tree fell and we were stuck. We did not have a saw, but our friends were way more prepared than us and they had a saw. And at that moment, I said, we need to get a saw. So we just, got that one. We got the saw. That's the one they had. And actually, if we had not had it, we would have been trapped in the National Forest until somebody came and yeah. cut it down because we were like the we only were, people out there. We were stuck. We were stuck. Next, fire extinguisher. Can't leave home without it. And then this thing, are you ready for this? Here it is. You will never guess what's in this. You know, this is a legal requirement in some places. Like you yeah. have to legally carry this. In Europe, you have to have this. I think in Africa, a lot of the places in the world, you have to have this. <laughs> This is such a painful show and tell. It's like we've never used our own gear before. Hey, you don't have to use the stuff until you have to use it in a bad situation. So I guess that means we've been pretty safe so far. Now you know we have a triangle. Safety. A couple things we don't have on the table because they are attached to the truck, but we have max track boards and those are for getting us unstuck too. We have also have an air compressor on board, which is installed underneath the passenger side. One last thing in this category that we cannot show you, we can briefly show you a, a shot of it, but it's we don't have a ladder, so we can't get to it right now, is our Starlink. We have Starlink permanently mounted on our roof of our camper, but it is on magnets. So if we want to, we can get up there and pull, the, pull it off the magnets and we can take it anywhere with us. It's amazing. We are so thankful. It is game changing on like how much we keep Starlink on 24 seven, which we used to not do that. We used to be walking through the forest, holding up the satellite, trying to make it connect. And now it's on top of our roof and awesome. we don't even think about it. It's amazing. All right, let's go. So next section up is recreation and fun. I will say that we do miss having bikes. That's one thing we are not bringing with us on this trip, but we did bring stuff to keep us fit, to go hiking, to go running, to go swimming. That kind of stuff is what we're gonna be doing most on the road for the foreseeable future. We each have the exact same bag. It's a camera bag, but it's also a good backpack for hiking because it does have the waist strap, which is actually a lot more stable than a lot of other camera bags I've seen. We also have a yoga mat. This is great for stretching. KT tape, this is one thing I don't know that I'm gonna find on the road, so I went ahead and brought it. If you don't know what KT tape is, you probably don't need it, lucky you, but for me, I use it for runners knee a lot, but it just kind of holds everything in place. All right, on my side, ugh, 10 pounds. Each. Whew, <laughs> feel the burn. We All feel right. like 10 pounds is probably a good yeah. in between to keep on the road. Next, we do like to run, and one thing that we struggle with is water intake while we're running, especially if we don't have a bottle with us. We have these running backpacks. It fills up with water and it has a straw and you can just drink out of it from there. Highly, highly recommend. I would not put Gatorade in it though. I did that one time and it was not a good experience. I'm not sure why you did that. We also have two camp chairs, which are very light and they're comfortable. We keep those in the back box as well as a lightweight table. I believe it's made of aluminum. Yep. It folds up. It's kind of annoying to set up, but it's really great how small it packs yeah. and how lightweight it is. That's why we're not setting it up for you right now. You've seen it. We'll put a picture in here. Hello. All right. Next up is Kramer. Kramer, I think, has more gear than we have. Traveling with a dog comes with its own little hurdles, but paperwork and all that is in another conversation. But this is what we're packing to keep Kramer safe. Some of it is requirement. Some of it is for his own good. So over here, we have the Rough Wear Life Vest. Now, yes, Kramer does swim, and he is a swimmer of swimmers. But sometimes the water can be a little much, and this keeps him above board. Next, we have a raincoat. Always need this. That's more for us than him, because he's a sponge, and he will bring all the water inside with him. You'll notice most of the gear is by Rough Wear. We love Rough Wear. We're not affiliated with them. But we just like what they produce, and it's been good. One of the best things that we have bought this guy gets hot so often because of his fur. It could be 65 degrees out and he's still panting like it's, you know, in the Sahara. So we bought this thing and this is a water cool vest. All you do is you put it in water, room temperature water. Now if you can get ice water, great. And then it goes over top of him like the raincoat and it cools his core temperature down. At first I was like, I don't know if it's gonna work, but we put it on him and then within like five minutes of putting it on, he had stopped panning in the car. So yeah. it brings it down just a few degrees. We almost always have water on hand, 
So it's just an extra way to keep him comfortable. And if you can get a different color because this color is awful. So next we have this rough wear leash. It's great for everyday use. It can wrap around your waist so you don't have to use your hands if you don't want to. It's just really durable and it's a great go-to leash. And we also have this retractable leash. This is up to 16 feet. We know Kramer's be on a leash a lot more internationally than he is at home. So we want to be able to give him a little more free reign if we're on a beach and he has to stay on a leash. So that's what that is. We also have this, which we've had from the get-go of in van life. Mm -hmm. Got this in our first van. Also by Roughwear, it's seen better days, but it still works great. It's just a nylon lead and you can hook it between one pole or two poles. And it's sort of like a clothesline where he can walk back and forth. The muzzle right here, we've never had to use a muzzle on Kramer. He's great, but some countries do require a muzzle if you're using public transit, if you're on a certain airline. For that reason, we carry one with us. It just gives some people a peace of mind because they're, for good reason, some people are very scared of dogs. But we chose the specific one because he can breathe through it easily and he can still drink water in it. Not all muzzles do that, so we want him to be comfortable and safe, and that's where we got this. We also bought a medical first aid kit for dogs. Have not had to use it, but it has like gauze and dressings and all the stuff that dogs need. This is Kramer's clipper set. This has like a nail grinder. It has the clippers for clipping his hair, scissors, comb. This is the last of Kramer's stuff. We brought enough flea and tick, which is a monthly treatment for him. Poop bags, toothbrush. Oh, this for loud noises. We use this when we're grooming him. <laughs> but it's just a little like, almost like a tennis sweatband thing, but it goes over his ears and it blocks out the noise and he's not scared of the hair dryer when we use it. That's Kramer. Let's go on to the next section. Next section is entertainment. Pretty much life is entertainment when you're traveling, <laughs> but at night when you're tired and you wanna just zone out for a while, there are a few things we have to keep us entertained. One being in our bed is a massive iPad with a mount. It's amazing when you're in a small space that a 13 inch I or iPad feels huge, Yeah, but it does. We don't watch a ton of TV, but sometimes like Sarah said, after a busy day of being out and about, sometimes you just want to veg. And having a little TV in the bed, that way you can just lay down, it is nice. We try to read more than we watch TV. We've been making a bigger goal of that, but we each got a Kindle recently absolutely love it. We did splurge for the new version because it's all USB-C, so all of our electronics have the same input. We also each have a pair of noise-canceling headphones. All right, that's the entertainment. Literally, our life is entertainment, which is a cool thing to say. Oh, we're so cool. Next section, we have cleaning. Which is our favorite section. We have a handheld broom. It makes the most sense to get on your hands and knees and sweep the floor, which I do usually twice a day, because especially when we're at the beach, it gets it gets dusty. But for the days when sweeping's not enough, we also have a vacuum. Oh gosh, Chris, obviously he's never used this before. I'm the one who's always used it. That's how you empty it. That's not the on button. This is pretty cool. I left it in the packaging, so I thought the packaging was really cute too. But what this is, it's, it's a little hand washing bag. Now, we're going to be able to find laundromats or laundry service in most of the world, but sometimes if we're far off grid and we want to be able to wash something, this is better than just having to use the kitchen sink. You can put water in here, you twist it, you rub it, it's got little scrubbies on the inside of the bag, and then you dump it out. Now, you're supposed to use biodegradable soap with this, so we did bring biodegradable soap with us specifically for this little laundry bag. Show them the thing I'm excited this about. This is what Chris is so excited about. This is amazing. This is like one of those impulse buys I bought straight from Korea. Paper towels take up a lot of room in the rig. They do. They just, you always buy them in a two pack and then you're stuck with an extra roll and they're just awkward and they shove into a cabinet and I hate carrying paper towels. But these little things, they're like- It's a paper towel. It's a paper towel. They expand with water. You guys have probably seen these. And this right here is a reusable shopping bag. That's our cleaning supplies for this. I mean, we didn't bring out like our antibacterial spray and that kind of stuff, but those are things we're totally gonna be able to get all over the world. This is really just, we brought these things with us because we know that we're gonna need them. We're not gonna pull everything out for this because truthfully, this is like an entire video in and of itself. There's a thousand little pieces. We have extra light bulbs and extra fan belts and extra everything that we could possibly need in our rig. We were really lucky the people that owned it before us kind of set us up with a great kit and then we sort of added what we needed to it in addition to it. Basic tools we carry with us, you know, wrenches, screwdrivers, 
belts, get like B40, we oil, I mean, everything you need, we carry a little bit to get us by. We also went out and bought a manual for our rig. So this rig is, it was never imported into the US. We had to order one from Australia, I believe, for the exact model. So if we need to fix something, we're trying to diagnose it, or we want to see like a graphic of it, we do have a manual. We did buy that because we figured <laughs> if we're going to be the ones fixing it, we need to know how to do so. So we work from the road. One part of our work is YouTube, and then the other part is freelance gigs, mostly like websites and marketing, different things like that. So we're not gonna show you all of our camera gear because- We're using it right now. <laughs> we're using it, and a lot of you who are watching aren't using it for YouTube. Two important things to mention as far as workflow goes would be the Starlink on the roof. Also, we both have Google Fi cell phone plans, which runs off of T-Mobile in the US, but when we travel abroad, it just instantly picks up for no exit charge. So. We can travel, use it abroad, and then go straight back home. This is the part that stressed me out the most prepping because I just feel like I'm going to forget something inevitably. If you know anything about Sarah, she likes to prepare, and I, she has prepared. This is paperwork, legality kind of things. And again, this is another topic in and of itself. But briefly, what we have to travel with us is we have to travel with our car registration, insurance proof, which will be changing from country to country. We each have our vaccine records in our little yellow book. So it's saying that we've had yellow fever, typhoid, and Hep B. We have each of our passports and our IDs. We each have international driving permits. We've made copies of everything. This is the really important part. We make copies, like three or four copies of all of our paperwork and then laminated it. Why we did that is we've been told that when you cross borders, sometimes they want a copy of your license and sometimes they won't want to give it back to you. So we figured three or four copies of everything is probably enough to get us by. If it's not, I brought extra self-laminating stuff. We can always make copies at hotels around the world if we have to. A best piece of advice that we were given was don't hand over your original document. Ever. Ever. Hand over a copy. Unless they just like really are insistent, but you want to make sure you've got your hand on that paper too, because the second they walk away with that title, you're screwed. <laughs> like you, it's going to be hard to get it back. Yeah. All right. So we kind of keep everything in these little folders. Kramer has a folder for all of his paperwork, which is um, his vaccine records. If you guys have any questions specifically about any of that paperwork, if you want to know more, happy to answer those questions. It is a pretty loaded topic and it's definitely one we're learning as we go, but so far so good. Healthcare outside of the United States for us means that we need to get travel insurance. And so we are members of Safety Wing, yeah. which is a great program. Like we use it every time we go out of the country. You can start and stop it depending on your travels in a month increments so 30 day increments. So we get it and then when we come home, we stop it. So we're not paying for care when we don't need it. But it's about $35 a month per person and it'll cover our medical cares if we have to be air evacuated out of somewhere. It covers a bunch of different things, but if you've never had travel insurance, get it, it's a small price to pay. Also for medical care, Wilderness and Travel Medicine, this book came highly recommended. I'm skeptical that when I am gashed and bleeding from the thigh that I'm going to remember to open this book up and yeah. try to fix it, I guess. I'll probably YouTube it first. So be patient with me if you're bleeding and I'm reading that. Oh my gosh, I hope it never comes to that. <laughs> <laughs> right. For some reason we get asked all the time, where are your clothes? Show me your clothes. Show me your clothes. I don't know <laughs> Sounds why. Sounds <so> threatening. <laughs> <laughs> so we're showing you our clothes. I've left my underwear inside the truck, so you're not going to get pretty B-roll of that right now. But everything else, this is us. Actually, Chris is not being totally honest, because right now it looks like I have packed way more clothes than him. He did not get all of his packing cubes out. He actually has a much larger clothes cabinet than I do. <laughs> I want to say it's because he's six inches taller and he needs the extra space for his clothes. He's not being honest. He does pack more than me. All right, so our clothes situation here. We have fine-tuned this over several years and there's a couple of things that we do. We pack for the season, so most everything here is made for summer weather. Sarah and I have matching raincoats. Mine's red though. Mine's blue, green. Yeah. So I'm gonna skip over my bag and we're gonna go straight to my Brooks trail running shoes. Why do we have matching of everything? Because we're in love. So we also have matching normal running shoes. We're big Brooks people. But Brooks. Glycerins for both of us. Not that you guys really care, but I don't know what I was thinking when I thought I could keep white tennis shoes clean. Next are my dress shoes that don't look very dressy. All birds. 
I use Birkenstocks, and I always feel like Dwight in the office when he's like, I always carry an extra pair of Birkenstocks for fancy occasions. And then we both have Chacos. Great. Chacos. These are comfortable. They're good for getting wet. They're especially good if you are swimming in a river or the ocean and you don't want to cut your foot on glass. They're the ugliest shoes you'll ever buy, but I enjoy them. I don't hate them. My entire wardrobe is literally seven, seven to ten black t-shirts. It is. I like Viore. They're expensive shirts, but they last really, really long. I pretty much did the same thing. So we pretty much, our entire closet is black and gray and denim. That's pretty much how we divide everything up. I'm not even wearing black right now. This is one random shirt, but it's not. My shorts, that's where I start putting on some color. The idea is keeping things pretty neutral, especially when it comes to tops, you can mix and match. So even though all of his pants are different colors, all of his shirts are black, so they're easy to interchange. All right, so that's pretty much it. If you have a specific question, just know that we do mostly neutrals and we do quality over quantity. So we do wear expensive brands sometimes, even if they've been purchased secondhand. We like good quality clothes. They last a lot, long time. We air dry our clothes, they last a long time. When you buy quality over quantity, it's a more ethical way to shop. And that's sort of like our mentality, less is more. All right, that was a lot, but that was it. That was a lot. I hope this didn't overwhelm you. I know we probably missed products in there, but we did the best we could pulling everything out of the truck. If you have a question about something that you did see or that you did not see and you want to recommend it, please leave it in the comments. We may already have it or we may not. And we are always open to suggestions. So drop those in the comments. We really appreciate that. All right, we're packing the rig up. We're leaving San Diego finally. Finally. And we're heading south. All right, next video. Mexico. For behind the scenes and extra content, you can head on over to our Patreon community. Otherwise, be sure to follow on Instagram or like and subscribe here. It really helps creators like us.